Hello everyone, in this video we're having a look at State Machine 2 for Game Creator 2. The first module was a favorite and it's great to see Ninjutsu Games releasing this for Game Creator 2 as well. So here we are on our scene. Um, I haven't set up anything special, so we've got a main camera, um, we've got a camera shot, we've got a player and we've got a plane. And that's it. So first things first, um, let's add a State Machine Runner. To our player then here in this folder going to create a new state machine um, it's in the game creator foldout so here we go and let's call this state machine player then I'm going to drag this in here and then let's open this up and what I'm going to do is I'm going to dock it next to the player so we can actually see it in action as well while we're using it up so first things first, um, we've got several options here. So we've got create node, um, which allows you to create a node. So trigger, uh, state machine nodes, condition, branch, and actions. And I'll discuss all of those in a bit. We've got a create group, which allows you to create a group. Um, the great thing here, um, obviously, um, is that once your um, you know your state machine becomes a bit big, which they often tend to do after a while, um, it allows you to group everything together real easily. And then um, one of the nice new extras here is uh, create notes. And you know, like I mentioned before, once it becomes big, sometimes it's really difficult to organize and actually keep track of exactly what everything is doing and this allows you to help out with that so yeah it's a, it's a nice little extra i uh, much appreciate it so we're going to add a, a trigger there we go so we'll add a uh, action and the actions will be really simple so just so you see everything in action i'm going to do um, wait uh, three seconds just so we have some time and then we're going to make uh, the player jump and that's it the trigger by default uh, just like where you are used to is set to on start we can keep it at that and um, yeah let's see this in action so we can see it being activated and then he's going to jump pretty simple straightforward now one of the things that I, I really like here is um, okay cool we you know we have that um, there we go what if I want to add a condition so he's only going to do that um, if he's actually um, idle at that point so we'll change it up we can select this one and just delete press the delete key it's going to be gone and then if the condition is met um, which is just idle if he's idle, then this is going to trigger. Then we're going to hit play again. And this will run. And there we go. Okay. So then the next step. Um, I also want the same actions to happen um, whenever I press... Uh, the space key so let's do um, input input button and we go keyboard uh, keyboard press space but it only happens once he's idle as well so we're going to um, run them here so gotta make sure and then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going I want to get rid of this wait three seconds here I'm still gonna add a small weight um, of just simply one frame. There we go. I'm going to copy this over. Then let's get rid of that. I'm going to add a um, action here. Paste in my weight. Let's drag that up a bit. And then this is going to go to my condition. And there we go. Then when I hit play, it's going to jump. And then if I hit space, he's going to jump again. And that's a nice thing. We can literally reuse the same conditions, the same actions, um, 
with different triggers. And I actually really like that. It's incredibly flexible um, and incredibly easy to use. Now we've got a couple of other things in here as well. So when we drag out, um, we have a uh, branch node. And basically this branch has um, conditions, actions, and if those are not met, um, it's going to go, um, you can output to something else. So we could output to these actions, for example, if these are not met. Um, let's add another trigger. Um, so create node, trigger, there we go. I'm going to drag that in here. And as you can see, everything can be reused, which is honestly is really cool. That's really great. Perfect. There we go. So um, in this branch, so we're going to uh, let's pick something. Um, so that it makes sure that it's not met. Let's do navigation. So if he's um, dashing, then he would, well, do whatever. However, if that um, isn't met, um, it's going to go to these actions as well. So what do we do here? Um, so let's find a trigger. Um, let's do another on start. You know what? Just to make it a bit easier. Just to show you how it all works. So we can have these actions go to this branch here. And this time we're going to wait. Um, let's do six seconds. Um, and if it would be Matt, so if he would be dashing, then... Um, I don't know, we'd have a, a shake burst of the main camera. Perfect. Now, let's play that. So we're going to be jumping um, now with this one. Then we're not dashing and we're going to be jumping again because these conditions aren't met. So then it will continue. And this is a nice little thing to add um, in between so if you have a, a process flow and you just want to make sure that you know what if I'm um, running and jumping I want to have a little shake burst we could actually add running here and then we'd have a shake burst um, with the jump for example so you can add the last little in between if it's not met it's just going to go to the regular actions now what I really like and th this is a personal thing because that's always one of the things um, you know, with Game Creator 1, that um, with Behavior, for example, that was a shame at the time, is that we couldn't reuse the same actions um, with multiple situations. And in this case, we can. So we can have multiple situations. We can um, run all of these uh, same actions, basically, um, with three different triggers. Some of them use these conditions. Some of them don't use these conditions. Um, and it all just works, and it works really well. Now, as you can see, we have quite a lot of actions here. Um, and, you know, I want to make sure I know what everything does. So we can literally just call these wait. And that's it. Um, and we can call these uh, jump. And uh, just by the, you know, the color coding, you can uh, basically differentiate what is what. So this is a branch and, you know, the red ones are a trigger. So we know what's what anyway, and we can just rename these. And um, can just call these is idle and perfect. Then add a, a little sticky note saying um, jumping. <laughs> Pretty useless considering there's nothing else. Uh, but you know, this uh, makes it all easy to organize. And let's, let's zoom out a bit. Now, just like where you're used to with the first one, and if you didn't have the first one, but you had um, uh, the behavior module, for example, for Game Creator 1, we have a blackboard as well. Now, this blackboard allows you to um, reference um, local objects in the scene. So um, we're going to have a look at that in a, in a tiny bit as well. So um, 
let's keep this here, um, but we're going to create a new state machine. So let's create a 3D object because I want to show that, you know, this doesn't only work with players. Um, it works with, uh, oh, with everything else as well. Let's do five. Um, let's make this a bit lower. There we go. I'm going to turn on gizmos for a second. And I'm going to move up that uh, collider and make it a trigger. Perfect. So here I'm going to add a state machine as well. And we'll do um, state machine um, platform. There we go. I'm going to drag that on here. And then we're going to do, um, oh, sorry, I need to open this up. There we go. Um, so then here we're going to do a node, a trigger node. And we're going to stay in the theme of jumping because, you know, why not? Um, and then uh, did trigger, we're going to do, um, um, where is it? Uh, on trigger enter collider uh, player so if the player enters and then he's going to um, do two things so we're, we're going to do two branches here um, so we're going to do another action and align that as well so we'll do two separate things so um, let's set up the first one first so um, we're going to do the jump again because yeah why not um, add that small um, there we go perfect so here I would like to change the color of the cube once we jump in it and we need a local reference for that so if I um, look up um, material um, change material color there we go um, you know I need to reference this local scene object so we're going to go to the blackboard um, game object cube and uh, that's it we'll leave it empty so we're going to go on our cube we have cube here and we're just going to drag this in perfect now on this cube I would actually like to add uh, another box collider um, just to make sure we actually walk on it um, so let's head back to our uh, actions and here we go to variables and we're going to do state machine runner variable. Then the target is um, this platform and we're going to select our variable, which is the cube. Um, and we'll just set it to red. Perfect. Then let's hit save. Now, before I get started, I wanna make sure that this works properly. So I want to test this out. So I'm going to disable um, this from working and I don't want to remove it because it's too much of a hassle. So I can literally right click and then do disable on all of the triggers. Now the trigger for inputs, we can actually leave that. Um, I just want to disable the automatic on start. Then I'm going to hit save and we're going to play. Now I'm leaving this open. So as you can see, these are not running, um, but if I press space, I'm still jumping. So that is still running, which is awesome. And we're going to go to um, here and um, we're going to walk over and he's going to jump and it's going to turn red and that's it. So um, it's a nice combination of being able to, um, you know, reference local scene objects, but for a lot of the stuff you obviously won't need to just like with uh, state machine one, um, just like with, um, you know, behavior stuff before. Um, and that makes it really awesome. But I really like these, all of these small, um, you know, all of these small things, um, being able to uh, temporarily disable something just for testing purposes, um, being able to lock something um, just to make sure that you can't actually move it around. We're good, we're going to leave it in place. Um, you know, it's all of these small things that uh, really add value. Obviously we have cop, uh, copy, paste, cut, uh, duplicate, um, really good stuff. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to see this. I'm really excited to see what people will do with this. 
but it's definitely a really good release. So thanks to uh, Ninjutsu Games for sending this over um, so I could try it out. And uh, thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next one.